hooked up in that tail. Get up, fat boy. Come on, let's go for a walk. Come on. I know he can't stand it. He's always gonna go for a walk. He thinks I'm not paying attention. He thinks he's gonna sneak up behind me. He might even wanna play in just a minute. We'll see. So I'm gonna show y'all something interesting. If Lincoln doesn't get us both stung, big yellow jacket nest right here. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. Get, let you see it. I'm not real active right now. I've been watching them for a couple of weeks now. He was checking me out. Wonder why I'm standing so close. The problem is I don't want to kill this tree. So I'm not entirely sure how to get him out of there. If you got any suggestions, put them in the comments below. Pouring gasoline really isn't an option because that'll definitely kill the tree. But it's not far from my house. You see there. Down, that's the bottom of the tree right there, and that's my house in the background. So I do worry a little bit about the girls being out here and getting stoned. So let me know what you think. So somebody suggested I should just start videoing myself telling stories. And I don't, you know, um, need to be the star of the show, so to speak. I, 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 I am a little bit reluctant um, to be out in front of the camera. I like to write stories about my girls and about my family. I like to let them and other people be the star of the show. But I confess that it is easier to talk than it is to write. It takes a lot longer to write 1,500 words than it does to talk it. And I talk for a living because I'm a lawyer. I'm watching Lincoln walk up in the woods trying to figure out what he's doing. Oh, I see. That's important business. Marking his territory, making sure that the coyotes and the feral cats and the big buck deer all know this is his spot. That's important for a man to do, I think. So anyway, come on, buddy, let's go. So anyway, I, uh, you know, I don't feel the need to be the center of attention. I don't like having the camera on me. I feel like right now I'm supposed to be looking. Am I, do I look at the camera? Do I look up here and act like I'm not paying attention? I don't know. So I'm just talking. Maybe a good story will come out of all these words. I don't know if y'all can see this. This little creek in my backyard. or in the woods out behind our house. It's a big old pine tree that fell down through there a couple of years ago. You see it fell down. We harvest all of our pines. We have some really big ones. You can see where this one broke off out of that tree right there. And it's laying all the way down here. We harvest all of our pines. That one I couldn't get out because it was stuck in the mud down there. I knew I'd get my tractor stuck if I tried to get down to it. We still have some big ones left. Look at that big boy right there. Isn't that an awesome specimen? That tree's probably 125, 130 years old. Last year I cut some that got infested by beetles and had to cut them down. I'm gonna go up here and give you some perspective. We had to cut them down because the beetles, they spread. And so you cut them down, get the tops out of them, burn the tops, and try to harvest the lumber, and hopefully you deter the spread of the beetles in the process. Anyway, 
here. So a couple of them that I cut down, I did growth rings on. Let's see. So let me just give you some perspective. I got to make sure there's no, no little critters around the bottom of this tree that I don't want to encounter. Nice hat head. That gives you a little bit of perspective about how big this tree is. I don't know, let's see. I don't know if that worked or not. I don't know if you could see my hands trying to come together on the other side or not, but I could not reach all the way around it. And the bark is just massive on these old pine trees. I love it. Look at this. See this bark right here? It's just layer upon layer. I remember as a kid, I used to come, we used to come to these old pine trees like this and we'd peel that bark off. And the whole idea was to make a boat. You'd want to peel a square piece off. For some reason, we always wanted it to be as square as possible, which is not easy to do when it's just one-handed. And then me and a couple of my buddies growing up, and I'm talking about when I was five, six years old, seven years old maybe, living in Lake Forest, subdivision in Spanish Ford, Alabama with my old buddy Boone Island, in case he's listening. We would come to the creek at Lake Forest and we would throw our bark boats out there in the water. And then we'd have races. Clearly I lost this one. Lincoln, you won the race. Good times growing up as a kid in the woods. All right, so Lincoln and I are on a walk. You can see him down there. And um, it's supposed to rain all day today. Well, not all day. It's going to come in about 2 o'clock this afternoon. It's supposed to rain 2 or 3 inches tonight, which probably means that this basin down here will flood over because it does sometimes. That's okay. We can get in and out. Um, it's not a big deal. Sometimes I have parked the truck up on top of this hill one time before when it was supposed to rain like four or five inches. So um, I just decided, you know what? If I'm fixing to be stuck, well, I've been stuck in the house for a week, okay? I've been sick. I have tested negative multiple times. I, I don't have corona or COVID or whatever you call it. I don't know what it is. The flu, I don't know. Who knows? Anyway. All the girls left today. It's Saturday. I had somebody else teach my Bible study this morning. And um, today, yesterday, I started feeling better. Today, I feel better than I did yesterday. So I decided before the rain comes in, we're going to get out and walk. We're going to do something. I'm tired of being cooped up in that house. I've been quarantined off in one room. Almost like I'm in prison. Hannah brings me my meals. You know, like she cracks open the door. <laughs> Slides the plate in, then pulls the door real shut real quick. I think I'm maybe since they're all gone, I might make a sign hanging on my door that says, "Here lies Hannibal Lecter." If you remember the movie, The Silence of the Lambs, they always kept him quarantined off because he was too dangerous. Lincoln smells something. Probably a deer. I always try to let him stop and let him explore a little bit. You can see the clouds gray back behind me. Sun's trying to come through, but it's struggling. So, figured, you know what? We got a couple hours. Let's get out and walk around a little bit. Lincoln's been losing a lot of weight. He's been pretty sick. Y'all, if you followed me very long, you know that. You can see he's fat. He got up to 145. He started, his body was started retaining fluid. It was his kidneys or his liver. I can't remember. Anyway, we got him on some medicine. He's dropped a lot of water weight, which is good. He's doing a lot better. Come on, where you going? Well, we got to investigate something else. Now he's trying to eat something. Must not have been that good. All right, you ready? I'll try. All right, so here's the driveway. We just came down the driveway back from the house. Here's a power line that runs through our property. 
lots of times when I go hunting, you'll see me on this power line. I'm going to give you a full tour here. Lincoln over here, driveway going back out to the road, across the road, power line still going, right? Old antique store, barn, other stuff. So, this is where we normally plant our spring garden right here. I'll start working on it in another oh, month or so. I'll probably break the ground the first time. Right here where I'm walking, that's where Banks plants all of her sunflowers and all of her, we, we plant um, zinnias here and over there in the spring garden. Just kind of depends on exactly what we're gonna do. Let's see if I can get Lincoln in there. Oh, we're smelling again. So, give you a little tour, I guess a walking tour of the place maybe. Maybe that'll be enjoyable to you. Let me show you some of the scenes. Sometimes at night, you can come out here, especially when I'm coming back. I usually hunt way over there. You've heard me talk about walking back through the hardwood bottoms. Well, those hardwood bottoms are way over that next hill there. Sometimes at night, you hear these power lines. You can hear them crackling because it's so quiet. You can hear them. And I don't know, it's the weirdest thing. I don't know if it's something to do with condensation on the lines or what. And then every once in a while, you'll hear you'll hear them crackling. You look up and you see these little flickers of I don't, lightning. I don't know what it is. Just very faint, hardly noticeable. But it's still interesting. The vultures like those uh, power poles. They like to sit on top of them and air their wings out. Occasionally, I'll see an osprey that will sit on top of one. I know at the power plant, which is about three or four miles away, they have some osprey nest on some of the poles. There goes a crow across the power line. It looked like a crow anyway. That's our pond. We love to fish. I used to fish a lot more than I do. So I know this is not the best videography in the world. That big bird flying around, that's a red-breasted robin. The two behind it, there's three behind it actually. I can't tell what they are. There was a large flock of birds that just flew off. I tried to catch them or catch half of them as they, the second half as they flew off. The red-breasted robin jumped up off the shrub line as Lincoln and I were walking up. Lincoln's not at all interested in the birds. He's decided to move on down the line. The red-breasted robins, they always fly in. We always see them in, in cardinals. They always come in in the winter. And so they'll, what, what I find is that they'll get in, a, in a, fin, or a, a hedge line like this and they just hop from one part of the hedge to the next and they slowly move down the line. I always see them when I'm hunting because they'll, I'll be in a tree stand or a shooting house and they'll be working that line of that green field and, I, and they're, I guess they're just eating bugs and whatever else they find in the hedgerow. Kind of reminds me of quail. Quail like hedgerows too. Speaking of quail, I got a covey of quail. I, I, I thought I might be able to find them for y'all today and film them as I flushed them, but I hadn't seen them yet. We also got a beaver in the pond. I, I, I have my rifle with me. I consider shooting this beaver because he's starting to kill some of my trees. I, I can't decide what to do. I'm, if I shoot him, I'm not gonna film it for you. I'm not, that's not, that's not anything I wanna do. I have heard Travis, my buddy Travis, y'all have heard me write about him. In fact, if you've been reading my alligator stories from the Delta, you know that Travis is one of my longtime alligator hunting partners, one of my best friends, one of the greatest guys I know. He uh, traps beavers and he's got some beaver back straps for me. Somebody told me that they were some of the best meat you could have. And so I'm kind of looking forward to eating that. We'll see how that goes. Maybe terrible. If you got any, if you know any beaver recipes, then maybe shoot me a message. Check this out.
So, that's coyote poop. It's old coyote poop, but that's what it is. It's even got a, uh, you see, if you look closely, you can see the hair in it, where it's eating a, some kind of critter. So this is the other side of our pond, okay? I just want you to look. See how thick those trees are? And see how thick all that is. And then see all this in the middle. It used to look like that. Okay. Let's see how clear it gets right through here. That's where that beaver is. He's cut everything down out there. It's only a matter of time before he starts working on the bigger trees. In fact, you can see right here. Let me zoom in on that. That's a pretty big tree he's working on right now. I think we'll walk over there and look at that a little closer. I also brought my gun because it's a little bit cool outside, but I had this humongous water moccasin that on sunny days has been coming out here right out. See if I can get this to do right. Right out there. He's been laying out right in there. And um, Hannah stepped on him one day. She didn't see him. He was actually on the steps going up on the other side of the pond here. She didn't seem she stepped on him. Luckily, it didn't bite him. Good Lord was work, looking out after her. But, um, so I've been coming down here and checking for him pretty regular, but I hadn't found him yet. I've seen him a couple times, but never. I always find him when I don't have a gun. And so I brought this little 22 today for a couple of reasons. One, the beaver's getting out of hand, and I, I keep going back and forth about shooting him. My father-in-law, George, he used to kill them all the time. He didn't want them in his pond. And that was kind of how I was raised. But that doesn't mean that, um, that that's what I should do. Come on, let's go this way, buddy. Um, you know, I, I kind of like him. I, I like seeing him. I like watching him work out in the pond. I really don't mind that he's clearing stuff out for me either. Let me show you all this. So this is what happens if you're not careful about transplanting. I've been told this is called river cane. There's a native species. I don't think it's native. If you know what this is, if you know for sure, like if you're an expert, tell me, I don't think it's native. I bet it came from Southeast Asia because it looks very much like bamboo. Although it doesn't ever get much big. I mean, like this is, this is big river cane right here it's not something that's doesn't grow thick like bamboo but i know where it came from hannah had a friend um miss joellen sellers actually joellen sellers is the lady that gave us lincoln um she joellen had some pitcher plants in a bog on her property and um they were not um protected so we went and we checked with the game folks and they are not the game folks but the biology folks and they told us we could move them so we dug them up and we transplanted them over here and and in that big area of river cane there are bog plants there's also some way down the pond down here around those bog plants down there there's now all ribbon cane and so what we realized was we transplanted the ribbon cane with the bog plant so be very careful if you're going to transplant like that we made a bad mistake now we got a bad problem Speaking of bad problems, check this out. This dude is working overtime. Like he is getting it. Look, that tree right there, you may not be able to tell from the pic, from the video, but it's six, seven, eight inches at the bottom. Check this one out. That's another, that tree six, seven, eight inches round. This used to be right here, folks. I just want you to understand. It used to, so this table, it had, it had fallen over, okay? 
So just this past year, I came out and stood all this stuff up trying to get it back up. I could not see the pond from right here where I'm standing. And so that beaver just in a year has done all of this. Now there's a part of me that doesn't mind. I'm kind of like, hey, I like the view. I like to be able to see. I could walk down there and fish now when I used to couldn't do that. Oh, look, there's this hutch. I don't know if y'all can see that in the water right there. See all those really white limbs? That's where he's building, I think they call it a hutch. That's where he'll, he'll build his house. It'll be underwater, but he'll, oh, I bet he's got a burrow up inside. He's What he's done is he's dug a hole under the water into this thing right here. And so he lives in here where he's got air and his entrance and exit's gonna come out here. He's gonna keep building that up bigger and bigger. You watch, we'll keep coming back and checking it. Check this out. Like this guy, he's like running his own logging crew. Somebody, if you know my buddy Cecil Ammons, who runs a logging crew here in Covington County, Alabama, has for years. Tell Cecil I know where his new saw man is. Because this guy's wide open. Here's his dam that he's building. Let me come out here and look at it. Lincoln's like, what is this guy? I'm going to have to work on this. Lincoln doesn't like the competition, I can tell you that. So he's, he's what he's done is he's come out here to this. There was a log that was down right here. Okay. And I see now where he's. I can even see underneath that log. I don't know if y'all can see that. But he is slowly but surely building a dam around that log. I also see, hey, maybe this is his hutch out here. I don't know. Maybe I was wrong. Because I also see this trail going back up in the mud right there. And I see new sticks out there. But I mean, look, like he's serious. Let me show you how big this is. Let me see if I can get down there without finding a snake. That gives you an idea how big the tree is that he's chopped down with his teeth, with his front teeth. This one's a lot smaller, but still big. But look at how big that tree is that he chopped down. And then the cool thing about a beaver is, is where'd the tree go? Like, if you look around here, that's a tree. This little tree right here came from over there. He hadn't hauled it off yet. That that whole tree that's as big around as if I put two of my hands together, that, that was, it's right there, that I just showed you, it, it, six, seven, eight inches in diameter, it, it's gone. Look, it, it's not here. It, it is not here. You got this little tree right here. It came from somewhere else. It's, it, it came from right over here, right, where he cut it down right here. But a beaver that weighs, what, 15, 20 pounds? Maybe, he, and he got little bitty tiny hands. He drug that whole tree off somewhere. I'm sure he chopped it up in a little, I know they chopped the limbs off first and they hauled the limbs off. I've never seen them take a big part of the tree off. It's impressive work. So I think what he's gonna do, I think I see his plan now. I think he's gonna follow this log. He's probably put a lot of stuff underneath that log right there, okay? And, and, and it looks like if you follow it on out, like he could almost connect some land bridges and probably some old stumps and some mud, mud islands and follow that log all the way back across to right here. And, I, and then I think he could dam up this hole into the pond, back the water up and use that for his habitat. And, you know, mostly back up in here where Lincoln is, it, it's dry right here, but, but the creek goes to that, uh, that gully, that drain that floods that I showed you earlier, it, it's back in the woods right here. And so really, if he floods this, even if he raises that water level a foot, it doesn't bother me. So right now, I'm, I'm just tempted to leave him alone and see what he does. I'm going to walk back here in the woods a little bit and just see what we see. You know, in Alabama, even in January, you have to be real careful in the woods. See, he's back. I mean, he's just back here clearing out trees. I don't know what kind of tree that is because it doesn't have any Lincoln. Don't get out there, buddy. Come on. Because it doesn't have any leaves on it. Um, we got some dogwoods. We have some dogwoods, and, and we've had a dogwood blight over the last couple of years. It, this is not a dogwood bark, I can tell. Um, 
I, I, I would be bothered if he started cutting down my dogwoods because we don't have very many left. A lot of them have died, and, and I don't, I don't want to see them all die. You know, it has to be this balance in nature about what's more important to us. Do we, do we care more about the beaver or the, the tree that he's cutting down? Or the, some people say they eat all the fish in your pond. I don't know. I enjoy watching him. I hope that I could find him for you. Make sure I don't find a rattlesnake or a moccasin while I'm down here. That's, oh, that's what I was going to tell you was that this time of the year, even though it's cold, it's a warm enough day for a snake to be out. Let me show you this little hole right here. So you may be wondering, why are you filming this video by yourself? Like, if you're all about shepherding outdoors with the kids, where are they? Why, how come they're not with you? Well, two reasons. One is, um, I've been sick for a week. And, and you know, it's not, uh, I think I mentioned earlier, I'm, I don't have corona or COVID, but... But whatever it is, it's been kind of a nasty bug, and I don't want to spread it around the house. Kate plays basketball. He's also on the traveling volleyball team. Banks has ballet and all sorts of extracurricular activities. And, of course, Hannah's an extremely busy woman herself, and so I don't want to get anybody sick. Um, and so I've been quarantined off to myself. Now... Banks left, normally Banks would do something like this with me in a heartbeat. Banks left early this morning to go on a youth camp tour. Scott Dawson, who's a longtime friend of mine, great guy, strong Christian man. He hosts a Christian conference for students several times a year. So they left this morning going off to Strength to Stand in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. I'm excited for it because it's going to snow. And that's going to make it even cooler. So um, I'm excited for it because it's going to snow. That's going to make it just an awesome trip. She'll um, grow spiritually. She'll grow with friendships. And, and she'll get to experience some things that she doesn't get to experience very often. Um, man, this is a beautiful place down here in this bog. I just, I'm going to show you what I'm looking at just so you can see just how massive some of this stuff is. So during the wet time of the year, you, you probably couldn't walk down here much. What'd you, oh, Lincoln found a fish, a dead fish. He found the bones of a dead fish. Probably the beaver killed him. <coughs> Excuse me. I want you to look at this pine tree. This pine tree right here compared to Lincoln. Now Lincoln weighs 130 pounds right now. So that gives you some perspective on how big that pine tree is. I bet you that pine tree at its base is six, seven feet away. Look, if I get bit by a snake wandering around down here in the swamp on our property, y'all better make this video go viral because that ain't what I'm trying to do. Check out how big this tree is. So there's my 130 pound dog. There's the tree. Now granted, he's standing three or four feet behind it, but just look. This is me leaned up against the tree. You see how much wider than me it is. Let's do the old reach around test. This tree looks a little bit ominous. It's got widow makers on the top of it. We gotta be real careful around it, but let's reach around. Not even close. I, two of me couldn't reach around that tree. So here's a widow maker. I just wanna show you. Beetles got this tree last year. You see those branches? They're dead, and they will come down here in a hurry and make a widow out of me, or make a widow maker out of me. And that's why we call them widow makers. And so you gotta be careful, not that I'm a professional logger, but you gotta be careful when you're cutting a tree like this. We actually did not cut any of these trees. There's about 10 of them, 10 huge pine trees down here that are dead. And we did not cut any of them because it stays so wet down here that there just wasn't any way I could get my equipment down here to pull them out. And so they're, right now they got great 
um, bird holes in them. The woodpeckers are using them. I think there's some wood ducks that have taken over one of the woodpecker nests, which is nice. And so lots of good stuff happening down here just because we left those trees standing. And anytime we log, we always try to leave some trees standing because we want nature to have the benefit too. All right, I think we're about to head back home. It's getting mighty squishy down here. But I did just want to show you a few more angles. Great old trees. This this big pine tree here is dead too. This big pine tree here, it's bigger than the one I just tried to wrap my arms around. And you see the top's gone out of it. And there it lays. Another tree tops out of. That tree right there, I think the tornado got it a couple of years ago. I do see something interesting if I can get to it, I want to show you. Maybe I, have to, I might have to see all this is mud and I don't, I, I'm not equipped to walk through mud right now. You see that tree right there? That is not a natural occurrence in the bark, okay? Those horizontal lines, that is not from the way the tree grows. That is from a woodpecker. It's an awesome thing to see. Let me show you this too. See that right there? It's a good deer track. Deer walking through these muddy bottoms. Bunch of tracks right there. Some good tracks right in here. They go off that way. I can't get over to that tree like I want to. Just I'll, I'll try to, maybe I'll change boots one day and carry all over there and show it to you. Brenda's the one that taught me about that. She can probably explain it better than I can. Or if one of y'all knows, explain it. I just know, I've seen the woodpeckers do it. They work in these perfect lines around, they're not perfect, but they're, they're pretty perfect lines around the trees. Hey, come on, Lincoln. <coughs> And I don't know if they're storing food in there. I don't know if they're digging for food. I don't know what they're doing. Anyway, I'm hiking up out of the bottom now. Lincoln's down there in the mud somewhere. I didn't see any snakes. I was, I'm really surprised I didn't see any snakes. I thought for sure. I really thought I'd find a rattlesnake before I'd find a moccasin. And this pine straw, I really try to be careful to look for rattlesnakes. Copperheads too. A copperhead's a type of a moccasin. We have um, two different snakes that we commonly refer to as moccasins. One's a copperhead and one's a cotton mouth. Cotton mouths are usually darker and, um, and they're named appropriately so because their mouth looks like a big ball of cotton. And lots of times they'll lay open with their mouth like that. I don't know if that's a defense mechanism or what, but Anyway, we call those cotton mouse. Copperhead is that same color right there. And a copperhead will lay out there in that. You'll never see him. You stand all around him for an hour. Lots of people get bit by copperhead, especially kids in the fall. They play in the leaves and stuff that people rake up. And copperhead gets in there to find a little warmth. Kids get bit by them. Let me show you my bat box. George and I built this bat box some years ago, put it up, hung it here. There's another one way down at the other end of the pond. And uh, I don't think there's any bats living in it right now. We like to keep the bats around because they help with the insects. They like to eat mosquitoes. I've heard all sorts of, they eat 10,000 mosquitoes a night or 100,000 mosquitoes a night. Or, I don't care if they eat 10 mosquitoes a night. Anything's better than nothing. God promised Noah he'd never flood the earth again. I appreciate that promise. That's what the, the, the rainbow, the true symbolism of the rainbow is. That's a sign of God's promise to never flood the earth again. Um, but I'm pretty sure he found humor in it because, you know, mosquitoes reproduce in water. So we got this big pond out here. 
you know, you could arguably say is left over from the Great Flood. And if it were not for the Great Flood, we wouldn't have mosquitoes. So, thanks, God. <laughs> no deer today, but it's hard to see deer when you're talking all the time. And having a big old hound dog with you doesn't help the deer calls either. All right. Well, what are you doing? Looking like you've got an attitude about something. You hungry? Come on, let's go get some lunch. Come on. Come on, let's go to the house. All right, we're going to the house. Y'all have a great day. I have enjoyed this thoroughly. I don't know how this video is going to turn out. Let me know in the comments. Hey, this is terrible. Hey, we enjoyed it. Do this, don't do that. Well, I don't know what to do. This is. I'm just trying to um, venture out a little bit and do something different. Um, Y'all, everybody keeps commenting on my Shepherding Outdoors page. Hey, we want you to do some videos. We want you to talk. We want you to record yourself telling stories. And, and you know, I understand there's, a, I, especially like some of the older folks say, look, I can't read like I used to. I can't see. My eyes aren't as good. And so, you know what? I, I do everything. I do all this because I want to, um, I, I want to encourage and inspire others and, and, not, not that I'm some kind of outdoors, but I'm not. I'm really just an idiot, right? And so you know, I'm, I'm just kind of like riding that bike down that hill. I just kind of bumble my way through life. And man, if I can help somebody else learn from my mistakes, I'm all for that. Um, if I can encourage somebody or inspire somebody with something I'm doing, I'm all for that too. Um, I just, uh, just, I don't know. I just try to do what I'm called to do. Anyway, love y'all. Hope you have a great day. Uh, me and Lincoln are going to go inside and find some lunch, and um, then we're probably going to start watching later. Kate said her and her little boyfriend might come over. They're out in town today. She said they might come back in a little while and go hunting. I kind of hope they do, even if it is raining. I think it might be a good day to go. It's setting up to be a good day. So. Y'all have a great day. Take care. Come on. Come here. But he doesn't like stairs. Come on. He's fat boy. He's fat boy. How are you? Well, tell everybody hey. Can you tell everybody hey?